Rye whiskey makes the band sound better Makes your baby cuter Makes herself taste sweeter Oh boy, rye whiskey makes your heart beat louder Makes your voice seem softer Makes the back room hotter Oh, but my thoughts aren't good thoughts Boys, have I ever told you about the time I... On our first morning in camp, we woke up to bugling elk just down the road. So Tim and I took a walkabout, and we quickly got into our first bull. The bulls weren't quite running yet, so we decided that challenging them with the bugle would be our best option. My bugle did the trick and brought the bull in. Unfortunately for Tim, the bull remained just outside of bull range, and he was never presented a shot. It was a fantastic morning, and we couldn't have asked for a better way to start off our hunt. There's nothing like hearing bugling bulls just out of camp to get you pumped up for the next day. On the second morning, the hunters decided to take another walkabout just out of camp, and immediately got into another herd. Matt's cow calls really got those bulls fired up. A curious raghorn comes into Matt's call almost immediately. It nearly runs Tim over and Tim is forced to sit there patiently as the raghorn may spook the other bulls that are still coming down the hillside. With screaming bulls in the background, guy John Mullins tries to coax the young raghorn on his way as he hopes that it doesn't create a bottleneck and keep the herd from moving towards them.
as the young raghorn moves on, John notices another bull making his way down the ridge side. It's another young 5x5 five five that moves into about 30 yards of Tim. Tim contemplated taking the shot, but as it was only the second morning, he wasn't quite the bull that Tim was looking for. After a, quite a long standoff, the bull finally realizes that he may have gotten himself into trouble and quickly heads back up the hillside. Not long after the 5x5 five five took off, John notices some movement up on the hillside and tells Matt to call. Unfortunately for Matt, he's stuck out in the open as the bull takes a wide berth to come into his call. After a long standoff, a nice 6x5 bull finally emerges from the timber and takes a hard look at Matt. He's probably wondering why there isn't a cow standing there that Matt so perfectly emulated. With the familiar sound of echoing bugles off in the distance, Tim was left to contemplate whether or not he wanted to take the shot. It was a clear sign the herd had moved on, and with it only being the second morning and such a young bull, Tim decided to pass on him. It was a great morning, one the hunters will surely never forget. Held my baby tightly Oh boy, rye whiskey makes the sun set faster Makes the spirit more willing But the body weaker Because my sleep isn't good sleep Boys, have I ever told you about the time I took you It's a After a few unsuccessful hunts near camp, Tim, Mark, and I set out in search of a giant bull that John and Tim had seen the previous evening. We were quickly greeted by our first mature six point. Tim contemplated the shot, and I thought he was going to run me over. As a small 6x6 six six walks right behind us, Tim and I quickly notice a more mature, larger 6x6 six six coming in to chase him off. After a lengthy time behind the trees, the giant bull finally steps out into the meadow and presents Tim a shot. It was a long shot at 70 yards, but Tim thought he could take it, so he came to full draw and assessed the situation. 
making sure there were no limbs or branches that were going to get into his way. It was going to have to be a perfect shot at 70 yards. Unfortunately for Tim, just as he was about to release the arrow, the bull spooks and takes off. After the bull that we later named the fifth element moved off, we heard another bull up on the hillside bugling and raking trees. The fifth element and the bull on the hillside seemed as if they were about to meet in the middle and square off for rights to the herd. It was quite the experience, but the fifth element decided that today wasn't his day to fight and he quickly ran off into the distance. The giant bull from the hillside quickly moved in and rounded up all the cows. After watching the giant bull from the hillside gather up all his cows for about 15 minutes, we decided just to let him be and come back in the morning. Little did we know, this wouldn't be the last time that we get to see this giant bull. The next morning we set up in the same area, expecting to see the elk moving from the meadows below back up the hillside to bed down for the day. Unfortunately for us, we were out of position as the elk were already on the hillside and bugling could be heard way off into the distance. We decided to patiently wait until the wind changed directions so we could move into position on the hillside and try and call in one of the bulls that we had heard. Unfortunately for us, there was a lone elk that was lagging behind and he quickly busted us, pushing the herd further up the hillside. Once the bugling had quieted down, we decided to take a hike and do a little prospecting, frequently stopping to do cow calls and just listen to see if we couldn't spark an interest in any of the bulls that seemed to have disappeared. Lo and behold, a familiar bugle rang out from the depths below and we quickly hit the deck. Once we were in position, the excitement really ratcheted up as we knew that we were finally face to face with the giant bull that we would seen the night before. Even though we didn't know exactly how big he was, we knew he was definitely a shooter. This all had happened so quickly that Tim was stuck out in the open, slightly exposed, but with just enough cover behind him to keep the bull confused on to why he couldn't see anything moving around up the hillside. After what seemed like an hour long standoff, the bull started to move towards a large timber pile. Tim quickly realized that this was going to be his opportunity to draw his bow and once the bull cleared the timber pile, he was going to have a shot at him.
Tim had made an excellent shot on his first bull at 70 yards. After waiting over an hour, him and John snuck down to make sure the bull was done. It was an exciting time and we were all so pumped to finally have a bull down in camp. But now, the fun really started. Tim's bull was an absolute toad. We nicknamed him the old timer because after taking him to the taxidermist, they said he was probably about 15 years old. In the end, it really didn't matter what he scored. I mean, 340 inches at 15 years old? That's a dang toad! We had a blast hunting, and if there's one thing we could take away from this hunt, was the importance of actually just getting out and enjoying the great outdoors. After flinging a few arrows, DP was finally able to get it done. The recovery of his elk that night was an even greater experience, one that will go down in the history books for sure.